Welcome back, people of everywhere. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You have got to stop saying that. Saying what? Welcome back, people of everywhere. You sound like a moron. What is the problem? It's just an opening line. Yeah, an opening line that you made back when you made those cringy vlogs and you wanted to be like Toboskis. People of everywhere. Hello, people of everywhere. Hello, people of everywhere. Hello, people of everywhere. Hello, people of everywhere. Yeah. Those were dark times. Exactly. So just lay it to rest. You're right. I'll stop. Uh, anyway. Um. Doctor Who? So the 11th season or series of Doctor Who has just ended and it was the first season or series, I'm going to say season, that had Jodie, not Jodie Foster, I made that mistake last time I talked about Doctor Who. We all agreed that it would have been so much cooler to see Jodie Foster come up if we didn't already know that Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, being the first woman to play said role. And at least since the show, like, started again back in 2005, the Doctor typically only has two companions. But in this season, she has three. Those three companions being Yaz, Ryan, and Graham. Yaz is a police officer that used to go to school with Ryan, and Ryan is Graham's step-grandson. These three actors have incredible chemistry with one another, and the banter that they have, especially between Ryan and Graham, can be really hilarious at times. Ryan and Graham are the two of the companions that get the most time to shine in this season with Yaz getting like one episode that has to do with her family and she does a really great job in that but Ryan and Graham both have something that they're dealing with that is a spoiler so I'm not going to say and the way they go about it and the way that they deal with it and they're bickering with one another because Ryan doesn't really like Graham so them trying to deal with that and these two characters bring a whole lot of real acting chops to this season with the one coming out on top being the one that brings the most being Ryan he had some really great moments in this season that really pulled at your heartstrings and I can't wait till next season to see more from this guy because I loved the character of Ryan so much. But the character that everybody wants to hear about is Jody as the doctor, being the first female doctor. How was she? Was the show just pushing this leftist libtard movement down your throat and being super feminist and was it awful? No, she was pretty damn good. She brought a lot of energy and a lot of charisma to the role and a lot of heart and kindness and tenderness that as much as I loved Peter Capaldi's Doctor, the Doctor was kind of missing there for a while because Peter Capaldi was kind of a jerk. He was a little bit of a dick, but you know, that's... I feel like that was more like a callback to like the original Doctor's who were kind of dicks, but this, the Jodie Whittaker Doctor is very much like the new era of Doctor Who. She wants everyone to be saved. She wants everyone to be kind to one another. She will do everything in her power to save as many people as possible. And she was funny. Why are you calling me madam? Because you're a woman. Am I? Does it suit me? What? Oh yeah. I remember 
Sorry, half an hour ago I was a white-haired Scotsman. During the first few episodes when she's rediscovering herself after the regeneration, she, she has these one-liners and it's like, what are you talking about? There's one scene where she is meeting Yaz's family and she says that she's trying to do small talk and it's some of the most awkward and funny stuff that is in the entire season. In a less general sense than I have been speaking of right now from episode to episode, most of these episodes are just kind of like Monster of the Week episodes where there is a story from episode to episode, but the main front of each episode is just we have to defeat this thing and the underlying plots are the character stuff. And while the episodes are entertaining, I actually remember more about the character things, like the little moments between characters, than I do about any of the rest of the episode. Some real highlights from episodes being like the final confrontation of the season premiere, really the entire ending and pretty much the whole episode of the Rosa Parks episode. Well, Brandon, wouldn't that episode just be full of the African-American agenda? <laughs> yeah, I guess if you want to see it that way. Or you could just see it as an episode about a time traveler taking one of her companions back to a period of time where it is not okay for black people to actually be people, seeing as how that companion is black, and it just makes for a really compelling episode and a really heartbreaking ending, and it was actually really awesome. My apologies. I'm calm. The episode, The Battle of Ranscor of Kolos, is the culmination and the ending of what I was talking about Graham and Ryan are dealing with through the entire episode. And I think the conclusion to that arc was really beautiful and really well handled. And you see some great acting from the Doctor here. But I can't go without talking about the episode The Witch Finders where Alan Cummings plays King James and he plays him so gay. Now I know it's a thing where like people debate on whether or not it's true that King James, the one who wrote the current Bible King James was gay, but like in this episode, there is no questioning. They're making like, especially the fact that they got Alan Cummings to do it, they wanted you to know. In this universe, he was gay. And he wanted Ryan. And it was hilarious. And then there was the New Year's episode that took place of the usually done Christmas episode called Resolution. And this is the episode that I wanted the entire season because it sees the return of a classic Doctor Who villain. And I was so excited, it made me so happy. And again, in this episode, Ryan pulls out some really heartbreaking acting chops in this episode. This episode, in my opinion, was the best acted from everyone. There is one point near the end where it is kind of cheesy. It's really cliche how one of the issues gets solved, but I can look past that because of how great the rest of the episode was. So really, any issues that I may have with this season are nothing but nitpicks, like the fact that each episode is more or less a Monster of the Week type deal, where each episode, what you get from it is more just small character moments. And I guess ultimately that's not a bad thing. I really enjoyed watching these characters, and I want to see more of them. And the adventures they went on were exciting, even if it wasn't, for me personally, the forefront of the episodes. 
For those who don't know, I have a different system of rating when it comes to television shows, and the grading system is binge it, watch it, skim it, or skip it. And seeing as how I literally just finished binge watching this season so that I could get caught all the way up before I did this review, I'm going to say that when it comes to season 11 of Doctor Who, you should binge it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have you seen season 11 of Doctor Who? If you have, whether it be just one episode or the whole thing, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Or, who is your favorite Doctor out of all of them, including from the very beginning until now? Once you're done with that, go ahead and check out my social media. The links to all of that will be down in the description. And then, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys next time. Those Indian loins could use some work too.